if we switch to a second example, I have here a, a, a spinach to, uh, plant, and we wanted to see the spinach biomass stability. How, do, uh, how does the spinach evolve over time and uh, generate its biomass? Now, why is that important? Uh, spinach in itself, uh, as, uh, when it is of a certain size, then you're able to harvest that spinach. And then after uh, a certain time, the spinach will continue growing and uh, start to uh, start bolting. So what you want as a, as a grower uh, is to have your spinach plant grow as fast as possible to that certain cutoff level and stay at this, uh, sorry, stay at that uh, uh, harvestable level for as long as possible and only then continue forward towards, uh, towards bolting. Now, I just put two uh, varieties to, to keep the slide easily here, but you're able to quickly see that the blue line is at that level quicker. So that's where the, the added value for a grower comes into play. Actually, this was the second time around that we did this experiment, because the first time around we had this result. And that puzzled us a little bit. Why would we find a dip in the middle of this experiment? Why would we find a, a, a dip in predicted <coughs> size of a plant? It doesn't shrink now, does it? So we took a look at what happened. And in fact, the greenhouse heating that night shut down, unfortunately. Of course, an error, but it showed us already that the effect of that uh, temperature <coughs> gives an effect upon the plant and, uh, and the leaf angles. And that's, of course, from there on directly measured and spotted by the system. So for us, uh, this error showed and underlined again the sensitivity of the system and the approach on how you're able to use such a system, not only for the plant growth under optimal conditions, but more even so under stress conditions and uh, uh, correlations between that. So with these two examples, I try to share a little bit about uh, the plants, which you're able to spot from the side or from the top, the growth over time, and how you're able to, uh, to exploit that um, uh, in, in uh, the day-to-day -day experiments. Second, I try to show that if you're able to put that into time and into motion, you're able to see the, the variations between the different varieties, between the different plants, and how you're able to exploit that in terms of, for instance, stress factors. The, the recovery of a plant um, after a stress factor is a second example for that. For us, um, we continued forward and we tried, if this is the above ground part, how about exposing the roots? Are we able to do that? Are we able to uh, zoom in and see the roots also a little bit? So we moved on and we have uh, set up a transparent pot system and you're able to uh, see the growth of the roots uh, as it touches the side of that transparent pot and you're able to uh, uh, take a look at, uh, at that movie. We uh, developed the algorithms to detect the roots and that's shown here in an overlay of this, uh, of this rooting system and all of the purple can then be measured, can be calculated and you have a pixel based overview of the rooting system also. Now tomorrow I will share a little bit more about this uh, root system in the, in the Lemnotech session. So if you're interested by this part, uh, I invite you for, uh, uh, for a continuation tomorrow. For now, I would like to continue with a different setup, and that's uh, disease scoring. Uh, you've already explained that disease scoring is difficult because you are able to um, see the plants as a whole, directly, in a single setup. So how do you then make a percentage or an overview of such a disease. Now, nowadays, usually we do not. Nowadays, in most cases, you make well, a score 1 to 4 or 1 to 9 or whichever score uh, a breeder tends to, uh, to exploit. And then you uh, pin your disease setup uh, in these uh, setups. And in this case, it's 1 to 4 scale. But if you're able to uh, make a digital phenotype out of that, you're able to plot, for instance, and in this case, the top up uh, image and the in left and yellow plotted uh, affected areas, you're able to make a plot out of the affected area versus the total area of that plant. And that gives you a, not only not a 1 to 4 scale, but a quantitative measure for your diseases and your disease uh, effectance of this, uh, of this plant. And if you wish, even you can do that throughout the time once again. So the growth of that uh, effect is also uh, uh, clear if you wish. 
We have scored this uh, manually uh, with a feeding to test directly on the plant, to test it on the images of that uh, uh, which we have generated, and to uh, allow this automated system to, to score. And the results were very clear. We have seen the, uh, the variance and the differences within and between the uh, human scoring and uh, uh, the higher quality of this digital phenotype scoring, um, which we have done with this system. So, at the questions part uh, after York talk already, um, we have seen that this system is capable of a high resolution uh, phenotyping, and you're able to take a large number of plants and uh, execute these kind of experiments. But also, of course, breeders have a lot of fields, a lot of areas where they, where they grow their plants and where they do their, um, uh, their phenotyping and selection. So how about you apply that not to a, uh, a fixed system as the Lambda Tech uh, system in itself is in the greenhouse. How about if you make that a mobile system? So you, then you have the same basic steps which you need to do in your phenotyping experiment except for the fact that you need to replace your uh, phenotyping with a, with, a, with a mobile system. So this key box system is what we have now uh, developed. It's a plain uh, uh, flight case box basically and there's a fixed camera position and fixed lighting in the top and then uh, uh, you're able to execute your phenotyping and your image uh, acquiring in this, uh, in this box. Well, the, the Keijin stress balls are in, uh, in at this moment. Um, and we have some uh, uh, first level uh, keybox software to analyze those um, traits directly. So with this mobile system, you're able to analyze a whole different range of, of, of phenotypes and create that and switch that to digital phenotypes also. <coughs> so in this second part, I would like to share a little bit of that. Uh, what could those be the examples? So the possibilities, for instance, are, uh, in this case, pepper cracking. The cracking of pepper is a, is a very important trait, as of course we as consumers do not wish to see each and every of these brown uh, cracks on your pepper. But how do you quantify the amount of cracking uh, on such a pepper if you have to do that manually? That's very difficult. Um, so in this case, we have uh, identified the cracked uh, pixel area and the red pixel area and plotted uh, that just for example uh, set up here. But that's of course also that turned into a, uh, a digital number and an overview on which you're able then to select your, uh, your products and your uh, uh, process at that moment. We can do the same setup for a melon case for instance. So the netting of a melon uh, it can be shown by the number of dark spots for instance. So then you're able to, uh, to get a feel for that. But also the roundness of a melon is also something very difficult to score by eye. Uh, but not for a digital phenotype. <coughs> so that uh, can quickly be turned to such a number also. Further example, leaf, leaf shape, leaf area, leaf color, uh, makes huge uh, impacts on the plant and the plant growth, the, uh, the power of growth and uh, the power of the yield. And with such a system you're able to harvest just a few of these leaves for your uh, analysis and image them in such a system as this. And then out to a different field, uh, germination. Um, germination is often also now tested manually, so you have these kind of uh, trays, uh, trays where you uh, sow your plants and then you uh, score the uh, percentage of germination, usually by eye at this moment still. Now, we have developed an algorithm for that, in order to do that. Um, it, to further automate the germination and the germination percentage scoring uh, for that also. So in this case, uh, correctly re recognize the process each and every of these 104 samples in a single go and in a, in a single image. So if I summarize and if I create an overview of this crop phenome center, the Kijin crop uh, phenome center as we take a look at it, it allows for biomass development biomass development over time, um, uh, and I'll try to show you a few examples of, for that. It allows for fruit shape, fruit color uh, uh, measurements. It allows for the root 
uh, uh, development of the route measurements. I didn't share an example uh, because of lack of time, but canopy structure from, uh, from the, using the, the top camera, the openness of a plant, so the, how effective is a plant to absorb all the possible light which it can be provided in a greenhouse. Canopy structure is one of the possible uh, ways to do that. Stress factors, abiotic or biotic stress factors, and the recoverance of that uh, stress factor afterwards is, uh, is an example. And the germination, uh, which I just saw a, a second ago. Now these are just a few, but there's many more, of course. The possibilities of these uh, type of systems are quite, uh, quite extensive. So for us, we have then now merged this uh, system, which we have uh, uh, purchased, the Lemontex system, already back in 2007, exploited that as one, the mobile system, the key box system, as a second to be able to go out into the field and do your measurements there. And the exploitation and the further uh, proposal to you uh, in, that, uh, uh, in the exploitation of these systems, we would like to do uh, through the use of the Phenofar facilities, which is then uh, a collaboration between Kijin and the Lab and Labotech company. So with that, I uh, created a summary and an overview. So I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, the Kijin team and the Labotech team for all the efforts and the work in this uh, uh, undergone for these examples presented here. Um, and I would like to thank you for your attention and be happy to take some